I'm here with Chris Gutierrez, chair of DML 2015 conference. The theme of this year's conference is equity by design. Uh, professor Gutierrez is professor of language, literacy, and culture at the University of California at Berkeley and was most recently a professor of learning science, literacy, and the inaugural provost chair at the University of California, Boulder. Her research examines learning in designed learning environments with attention to students from non-dominant communities and English learners. So um, I'm excited about the theme of the conference. Tell us about the, the theme and, and what's exciting about it. Oh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. I'm really excited about it too. The, the simplicity of the title Equity by Design um, really kind of belies the real importance of bringing this conversation to our community. Uh, I think one of the things we're trying to do in this conference is to reframe the debate over equity in educational technology, uh, moving us from simply issues of, of access, right, to broader kinds of conversations. So equity, uh, in short, is not just about access, but rather it involves, I think, a new social and pedagogical, pedagogical imagination about how youth and people from non-dominant communities can become designers of their own futures. So one of the things we've been trying to do in this conference is to really bring new questions to bear on our work. So I think that our agenda has been animated by some um, new kinds of sensibilities around bringing together equity and new media technology, such as how do new te technologies and networks offer, for, offer solutions or do they exacerbate in, in, inequity, right? We've, we're trying to move from just the bells and whistles to really look at how these new tools really can open up spaces, right, for uh, educational workforce and personal kinds of, of learning. Well, you know, I know for, for many, um, equity means access to technology. And, and I think that obviously that that's um, a foundation, but I'm getting from you that there's a lot more to it than that. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the questions we always should be asking ourselves is who is producing and what's being produced, right? Who's benefiting from these kinds of activities um, that we're designing for youth, especially youth from non-dominant communities. So I'm really interested in how equity can become part of the logic of design, of implementation, and assessment, so that it is one of our design principles, that it's not just a conversation as we're imagining kinds of new activities and tools, but that we keep thinking about equity throughout that process. What do you think w works in, in regard to those kind of non-hardware, software, technological issues with non-dominant youth from, from what your research has, has learned? I think what works is first really understanding the kind of histories that youth have in, uh, involved already with some of these practices and really understanding how we can best leverage the kind of everyday sensibilities and practices that, that youth already have and, and bring those into these new practices. I think that's when you start um, creating deeper forms of learning, deeper forms of engagement, and new tools and sensibilities that can be leveraged across spaces. And that's what connected learning is about. It's about how these practices, identities, and tools can travel in meaningful and productive ways. Uh, for the people using them. So it sounds like the first step is an important first step that any educator ought to think of is listening to the students talk about what it is that they do with their lives. Absolutely. I mean, part of, uh, I think, equity, um, as I mentioned earlier, thinks, requires us to think about new kinds of pedagogical approaches, right? Not just design-based kinds of sensibilities, but what new pedagogical practices um, are demanded by our attention to robust forms of learning and equity. And I don't think we've paid enough attention to it. But I do think the way we've organized this conference really affords opportunity to think about it. We've brought together 
one of the most exciting parts for me is we've brought together just the most amazing team of experts um, who, who, who have brought their years of experience with new media tools and working in these communities to help create an agenda that I think is going to both invite and push the participants to think about these in some, in some new ways. For example, we have uh, my colleague Linda Hall from Berkeley. She's adding a whole new strand to the conference that I think is very important. Her theme is expanding freedoms through digital media design and practice locally and globally. So what we're really interested there is issues of equity, not just nationally and locally, but again globally, and asking questions like, um, what examples of, of digital media learning being used in the design for learning um, are taking gender, economic, and social cultural equity into consideration, right? These are new kinds of questions, and I hope we have new audiences and participants, because we can no longer think about this as just a local issue. This is a global issue, and it has huge implications for populations of youth across the globe, and Glinda's work is certainly doing that. We also have um, a wonderful strand on opening learning educational technologies that Audrey Waters is, is um, um, chairing. And what's wonderful about this is, is that Audrey, as you know, is a writer who's been focusing on educational technology. And one of the central questions we hope here again that participants will, will address is um, how do we help make sure that educational technologies foster learning agency so that learners are the subjects not the objects of technology. And this is a recurring frame. How do we move um, our understandings and our design of activities so that learners are our agents? As I said earlier, they're designers of their own trajectories, of their own futures. And you're going to see this, this orientation across the strands that we're bringing together in this conference. Well, your enthusiasm certainly comes through, and, and I share it. I, I have spoken... Um, with Glinda and with Audrey, and I agree, you've got a, a fantastic uh, a spread of uh, experiences uh, coming coming together. In, uh, uh, and I hope you get a chance to talk to Ernest Morell and Sam Dyson because they're the other half of the team, and they're, they're scheduled. They're, yeah. They are. Uh, this is a configuration of people who I think will really help make this a wonderfully exciting, innovative conference. But also, I think it's going to be a conference that's going to create a new conversation, a new national conversation about how we can do our work in more mindful ways that put equity and, and rich forms of learning uh, that matter to people at the center. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris, and I look forward to, to the conference. Oh, I do too, and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.